What's up, guys? We're back with another Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation review. That is never not going to be a mouthful. And we're taking a look at Wave 2. So I'm already done with Wave 3, but I got Wave 3 first somehow. So we're going into Wave 2, and of course, I have to take a look at, well, the big one from this particular wave. I've got to take a look at Tila. So she comes, of course, in the standard style packaging for the line. So it's all done up with that sort of uh, blue Eternian hieroglyph thing that they've got going. Uh, figure there in the window, Revelation logo on the bottom. We've got her name that runs down one spine, and then the other has uh, some really good artwork of Tila. And then the back of the box has a different, larger bit of artwork for Tila with a small bio as well as cross sell for some of Wave 1 and all of Wave 2. So let's do it. Let's pull her out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Masterverse Revelation Tila. Obviously a very important figure for this line because she plays such an important role in the show. I mean, Tila was always important, but she plays obviously a bit of a bit more pronounced role in this show. So it's nice to get her earlier rather than later, of course. I'm Granted, I'm doing these a little bit out of order because I got them out of order, but I'm glad to finally get her. Uh, she is the third female figure that I'll be taking a look at in this line. And unfortunately, I think she is the worst female figure so far. Uh, Evil Lynn is, is still probably the benchmark for me, and Andra is surprisingly good. I think there's a lot of weird stuff going on with Tila. There's some good stuff here, don't get me wrong. But I think there's some odd stuff in terms of her aesthetics and overall proportions uh, seem a little bit out of whack in some ways. So uh, let's get started, see what she can do. She actually moves around. She's still very uh, par for the course when it comes to this line, so there's not a lot of surprises here. We've got a head that can look up a decent bit, not too much, but a little bit. She can look down a good bit. Slight but minuscule tilt, full rotation. Arms go uh, way out, so you know further than, than 90 degrees. You've got your rotation. We've got our bicep swivel. We've got our double jointed elbows. Mine are really, really tight. It's like one one side of the elbow wants to be tighter than the other, depending on which arm I'm messing with on any given day and the phases of the moon or whatever's happening. But when you get them going, they are really nice. So there's a lot of good range there. We've got hinges and we've got rotation at the wrist on so normal stuff. She does have a diaphragm cut, but it doesn't really do a whole lot. It's mostly a tilt and rotating point, but it's it's more just a tilt, really. There's there's really nice tilt, don't get me wrong, but she can't do much forward and backward because she has these armor tabs that sit on the front and back. So she goes forward only slightly, and then she sort of kicks back. She goes backwards only slightly, and then she just sort of kicks forward. And then you can slightly twist her there. She does have a full waist twist, though, so it kind of negates the need for that upper body swivel, although it would have been nice to be a little bit more functional. Legs go all the way out, so you can get her to do the splits if you need to. Kick forward is pretty good. I mean, it's not full because she has the rubbery skirt piece, so it's definitely going to get in the way. Backward slightly, you do have your thigh cut. We've got our double jointed knees, and again, just like my elbows, these are really, really tight on one side of the joint. This Right now, it's the bottom. It goes back pretty good, though. You do have a boot cut, which is hidden really well by the by the boot. And then we've got our hinges, and we've got rocker down at those ankles. Nothing gets in the way down there. Uh, very unencumbered. So she is very normal for this line. Like There's there's not much to, to say except that she is very similar to Evil Lynn. She is very similar to Andra. And then even then, the female figures are very similar to the males. They all move very closely. Construction is very much... Uh, seamless when it comes to these figures. They all seem like they belong together. The only difference is that some of the parts on her are a little more slender than the male figures, which is, of course, to be expected. Uh, and the only real problems I have with this figure are that I wish she could do a little bit more at the diaphragm area, but that big armor plate just sort of gets in the way. Aesthetically, this is where I feel like the figure kind of falls a little flat. And it's not because of this outfit. It's not because it's classic Tila. It's not because it's man-at-arms Tila. Uh, it's not because it's the end of the show look for Tila. It's because I just don't think this is very close to the animation. There is a lot about this figure that seems oddly proportioned to me, too. Uh, we know we've had a thing with this line in general that the heads all seem a little small. And for the most part, it hasn't really bothered me that much. She seems a little smaller than normal, and I think it may be just something about the hair that is kind of throwing it off. She's probably not as small-headed as I think she is, but I think 
there's something there and you know if I see it it might as well be there and she also seems to have tremendously large legs in comparison to her waist and her arms so a lot of the proportions on this figure kind of throw me off I do think that overall she looks pretty close from the neck down to the show I mean the armor that she's got here is you know very much her post episode one look so the majority of the show we see her wearing stuff like this or, or part one anyway and i think it looks all right she's got weapon storage back here we've got all the buckles are painted i wish this was a little bit more of a metallic paint rather than sort of like a super bright mustardy yellow because uh, it's gold in the show uh, there's a lot of different colors a lot of different textures especially on the boots we've got kind of like that fake uh, leather look how they've done the dry brushing on the cuffs to make them look a little bit more like actual material she's got her uh, satchel over here it's it doesn't do anything it's sculpted onto her onto her skirt so it of course does get in the way a little a little bit not much but it looks good as well and i think the armor plating while maybe not the most functional when it comes to moving her back and forth does look good and it looks you know a little bit more tactical and, and you know maybe a little bit more homemade in some respects because we don't really know where she got that clothing i do think that she looks pretty muscular and that looks nice you know that's very much uh, par for the course with the female figures and of course how it lines up with the animation i still think the arms are a little bit thin in comparison to her legs of course you know they shouldn't be the same size but something about it seems something about it just seems a little off to me it seems weird and she's got a super super tight waist in comparison to the skirt piece which flares out so i think that's part of it it kind of she cinches in at the waist and then she just sort of poofs out a little bit because this is so uh, puffy the last area about this figure though that i think is really where this figure kind of falls flat is that is the head and the face because i just don't think this looks like the show it's similar, it's it's close, but compared to all the other head sculpts in this line so far, it's just off. And she's she's kind of along the same lines as He-Man for me. He-Man is off. Uh, Tila is, is off in, 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 in that regard as well. Like comparing her to Evil Lynn or comparing her to Andra, uh, they are very close to the animation look. And I do think they got the hair down really well. Uh, that sculpt looks good and the fade on the buzzed side on her head looks really good. But I, something about it just doesn't, it just doesn't look right to me. Uh, it doesn't look correct. It doesn't look like the animation and her expression is very much uh, just non-existent too. So this would have been an instance where, you know, it kind of comes and goes on whether I want this on a figure or not. But this would have been an instance where getting an expression on her face or even an alternate head sculpt would have been really good because she doesn't come with anything like that. So I think what is here like is a good female face and I think it looks nice and sculpted well and is painted good. I just don't think this actually matches up uh, too well with what we see on the screen. Now as far as accessories goes, Tila is pretty well stacked. But some of these I'm just not all that excited about, if, if that makes any sense. Like, they're okay and they work, but after having Andra, I kind of wish she came with a few more uh, very specific things like she did. But to start with, we do get some hands. So uh, she's got a fist and a gripping hand on her in the box. You get a right gripping hand to go with her, and you get one of the weird open palm hands uh, that, frankly, she has almost no use for, but you can use it as like a style pose cupping open palm style hand we get her uh, closed staff which can go on the back here which i do really like you know i love weapon storage so that's cool so you've got the staff and then we've got the uh, open version so you've got the sword here and it's molded in like this sort of pearly metallic silver with a little bit of uh, black and some brown on it my concern is that this thing is super super big like it's really really thick um, so it is just a situation where it's probably going to be an odd kind of loose almost loose but tight fit in her hand like I feel like it's going to stretch the hand out over time and then it is going to be you know something that is awkwardly put in her hand like it looks weird to me when she's holding this well backwards when she's holding it it just looks kind of weird to me it looks way too big for what is relatively a small hand you know that's kind of a nitpicky thing uh, I suppose but it is a thing for me and then we've got kind of the open staff which does have an admittedly cool design uh, so you've got the full thing here I mean it's as tall as the figure and it's got kind of like the forked design at the end more of that silver and and the black color scheme but I'm happy that she comes with some of these but you know I say that and I really wish I really wish that she came with the uh, accessories that we got with Andra so the uh, the helmet and then the soft goods. You know, the soft goods are kind of wonky on that figure, don't get me wrong, but 
they work. And it would be nice to be able to have both of them that way without having to buy like multiples of each figure to get that assortment. And Andra comes with a lot of stuff. Tila comes with a lot of stuff, but Andra seems to have a little bit more. Uh, so I kind of wish she came with those to complement that figure so they could be kind of that matching pair. Granted, that said, you know, if you needed to, you can take that extra helmet from Andra and the soft goods and they fit on Tila just fine. So if you want to cannibalize an Andra for your Tila to, to cloak her and give her that gas mask helmet thing, you can do that. So yeah, overall, this is a pretty decent figure, but I still think she falls a little bit short compared to, compared to, well, a bunch of other figures in this line. And it comes down to a number of things. Frankly, she doesn't look all that exciting in comparison to a lot of other figures because this is her least engaging outfit. It's not the one people really want. It's also not nearly as cool as the stuff she wears in part two. And I still think the aesthetic is a little bit off and some of the proportions are kind of weird. I really wish that she had included the helmet and the soft goods like Andra included. That would have been awesome to be able to have both versions because she definitely is capable of using that stuff. It all fits on her. She does include a solid array of accessories. And let's be honest, we were definitely going to get a Tila sooner rather than later. This is her, I guess, kind of marketable look as far as what they were pushing with the show. So I'm not surprised we got this first, but I'm really hoping we get some of her other looks with another shot at that head sculpt sooner rather than later. So that's going to do it for this look at the Masters of the Universe Master Burst Revelations Tila. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.